top stories. St. Kitts nominated for World Travel Awards. Legislation passed regarding immigration amnesty in Antigua and Barbuda. And peace talks more realistic, says Ukraine. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Wednesday, the 16th of March, 2022. I'm Jason Davis, nationally. St. Kitts and Nevis has been nominated for the World Travel Awards and local tourism officials are generating a buzz for votes to be cast to get the country to the top spot. In a video announcing the nomination, Tourism Minister the Honorable Lindsey Grant said he was proud of the two categories in which the island was nominated. It is with great honor that I announce that St. Kitts has been shortlisted as a nominee in the 29th Annual World Travel Awards. I am particularly proud that our little destination has received global recognition in the categories of Caribbean's leading dive destination and Caribbean's leading tourist board. Minister Grant went on to give details of the voting process. I am now appealing to the people of St. Kitts to register and vote for St. Kitts from March the 15th to May the 3rd, 2022. Visit the website www.worldtravelawards.com and cast your vote. With your vote, St. Kitts can win the World Travel Ultimate Gold Standard Award in both categories. He registered his gratitude to industry workers and the team at the St. Kitts Tourism Authority and his optimism for the industry to rebound. The U.S. Embassy in Barbados is inviting writers from St. Kitts and Nevis and the Eastern Caribbean and Barbados to apply for the 2022 International Writing Program to be held in Iowa City later this year. The 12-week program will be fully funded and is scheduled to run from August 20 to November 8, 2022. Interested writers should send a literary-focused curriculum vitae and a 10 to 15-page writing sample in English or English translation to Bridgetown Exchanges at state.gov by 11.59 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time on March 20. Once again, that email address is bridgetownexchanges at state.gov. Such persons should have works from genres including fiction, graphic novels, drama, poetry, and screenplays, and should have them published regularly over the previous two years in traditional or online media. Applicants must be proficient speakers of English, comfortable with cross-cultural dynamics, eager to engage with writers of diverse cultures between the ages of 21 and 64 at the time of the program. They should be non-U.S. citizens and be able to participate in the full 12-week program in the United States. Accommodations can be made for selected fellows with disabilities. The IWP is designed to boost creativity and mutual understanding, facilitate interdisciplinary collaboration, further participants' professional development, and understanding of creative writing and publishing, and promote freedom of expression. Further details about the program are available on the IWP website at iwp.uiowa.edu, that's uiowa.edu, slash residency. Now for a bit of sport, a St. Kitts and Nevis football player applying his trade in Malta performed heroics to help his club win a crucial match on Tuesday. For more, we join SKNFA media consultant Andre Huey. St. Kitts and Nevis international goalkeeper Jelani Archibald was the hero for his club Burkakara in Malta as the towering goalkeeper came off the bench at the end of extra time to help them overcome Mosta three goals to one on penalties to reach the FA Trophy quarterfinals on Tuesday. The Times of Malta newspaper hailed the St. Kitts Nevis International as the player that helped the team to a deserved victory as they held the upper hand for much of the match. Archibald took center stage when he saved two penalties to help his team fend off Mosta's resistance. 
The report said Archibald, who came on a minute from time, was Burkakaro Hero as he saved Rafael Morisco and Will Duncan's penalties after Johan Benziza fired wide, giving Burkakaro a 3-1 victory in the shootout. Jelani Archibald has been playing as the St. Kitts Nevis International first choice goalkeeper for several years, including the World Cup qualifiers in 2021. He has been playing in the Maltese League since 2021 for Santa Lucia and was recently signed on a loan by Burkakara until the end of the season. We now move to news on the regional scene. Parliament's lower house has passed the Immigration and the Passport Amendment Bill on Tuesday, providing the legislative authority for key aspects of the ongoing amnesty in Antigua and Barbuda. ABS's Raghib Aparicio reports. While piloting the Immigration and Passport Amendment Bill 2022, Immigration Minister the Honorable E.P. Chet Green said there is a significant population of people living in the country whose immigration status is not regularized. Those people, he adds, are primarily residents of CARICOM member states. To this end, the government has announced an amnesty period throughout the months of March and April. To have them now, Mr. Speaker, regularized and got quote-unquote above ground to make open contributions to national life and economy, it is something I think is timely and something which all Antiguan and Barbudans, from the feedback we've had, welcome and appreciate. People residing ordinarily in Antigua and Barbuda for at least four years will be eligible for residency status. Those residing for at least seven years are eligible for citizenship. We have seen amnesties in the past where unfortunate statements of lend you um and take them back and so forth we made. In this instance, we speak a very genuine attempt to regularize persons who are living here illegally, to regularize persons who will be making contributions to national and economic development and persons who have lived through this pandemic period, making their contributions to Antigua and Barbuda. Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown echoed similar sentiments. PM Brown says the change aligns itself with the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party's long-standing position on immigration. This country, Mr. Speaker, has been built partially on immigrant labour, primarily CARICOM nationals. I mean, Dominicans, Monstrations and so on, they've been coming here from time immemorial. Opposition leader, the Honorable Jamal Pringle, also expressed his support for the move to regularize the immigration status of people residing illegally in the Twin Island states. However, he hopes to see more people becoming eligible for the initiative. Let us look at the fundamental issues that are causing persons not to be in status, and we try to plug those gaps so that persons can make meaningful contribution. People benefiting from the program will also not be liable to pay money owed to the government during the time in which their status was illegal. Rakib Aparis reporting for ABS News. Still on the regional scene, factors taken into consideration for lifting the COVID-19 restrictions in Guyana were fewer new infections recorded in recent weeks and a high vaccination uptake nationally. Health authorities say they'll keep a close eye on the numbers for possible surges, resulting in the restrictions being reimposed. Tamika Rodney has the details. Following more than 20,000 new COVID-19 infections recorded in January of this year, owing to the spread of the Omicron variant in Ghana, the country has seen a significant decline in new cases over the past three weeks plus. This along with 436,452 or 85.1% of persons receiving the first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, while 333,910 or 65% Point one percent being administered both doses were the main factors that guided the decision to discard mandatory mask wearing, social distancing, and vaccination protocols, which were in place for the past two years. Speaking on the sidelines of an event on a Tuesday, Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony, when questioned whether or not removing these restrictions at this stage of the pandemic was a responsible move, said that the pandemic is changing globally. We don't have zero cases in Guyana. We still have cases. Um, I think this over the last 24 hours we, we have recorded 35 new cases. So we have to continue to do the surveillance and to monitor. 
However, one of the good things has been that uh, we are not seeing as many cases. He said too that the Omicron variant, which is still circulating in Ghana, has proven to present milder symptoms and capacity is being built at the hospitals to ensure there is effective treatment of persons who become ill. The lifting of the restrictions can be reversed, the minister warned in the event that a new variant emerges. President Irfan Ali on Monday officially declared the removal of the remaining COVID-19 regulations, which included restrictions and social activities, as well as mask wearing and social distancing mandates. Dr. Anthony disclosed that employers who wish to maintain the protocols are free to do so. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health on Tuesday commenced a workshop at the Marriott Hotel to develop a package of essential health services for primary health care. The package will focus on providing equitable access to services for 215 health issues, especially in the hinterland regions. Some of the public health issues being focused on include tuberculosis, cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, skin care, and vision impairment. Tamika Rodney reporting for the HGP Nightly News. Internationally, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says on ongoing peace talks were sounding more realistic, but more time was needed as the refugee tally from Moscow's invasion reached 3 million. More in this Reuters report. Leader Volodymyr Zelensky struck a cautiously optimistic note over ongoing peace talks with Russia in a Wednesday video address. It is difficult but important as any war ends with an agreement. The meetings continue and I am informed the positions during the negotiations already sound more realistic. On Tuesday, Prime Ministers of the Czech Republic, Poland and Slovenia arrived in Kyiv. The first visit from foreign leaders since the crisis began. We are also here to tell you that you're not alone. Your fight is our fight and together we will prevail. Slava Ukraini. Glory to Ukraine, said Slovenia's Prime Minister Janez Jensa. The leaders arrived in the city hours after local authorities reported a deadly Russian airstrike. They reported bombardments that hit the capital before dawn and killed at least five people. Russia denies targeting civilians. Moscow has not captured any of Ukraine's 10 biggest cities since it invaded last month, seeding hope among Ukrainian officials who say the war could end sooner than expected. A possible point of compromise may be NATO. Zelensky said earlier Ukraine was prepared to accept security guarantees from the West that stopped short of its long-term goal of joining NATO. Russia sees any possibility of Ukraine joining NATO as a threat and has demanded guarantees it will never be a member. Also late on Tuesday, the White House announced that US President Joe Biden will make his first visit to Europe since Russia invaded to discuss the crisis. Biden is expected to announce an additional $800 million in security assistance to Ukraine. That's according to a White House official Russia calls its actions a special military operation to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine. Ukraine and Western allies call this a baseless pretext for a war of choice. Nine out of ten Ukrainians could be plunged into poverty if the war drags on, the UN has warned. Many residents are still sheltering from repeated Russian bombing, including Mariupol, the location of the worst humanitarian crisis where people are desperate for food and water. Ukraine's vice president confirmed that a convoy with supplies for the city had been hit at a nearby port. The UN says that just over 3 million people have now fled Ukraine. And according to a Monday estimate, over 600 civilians have been killed. Journalists on the ground have also lost their lives. And now for the weather. Current conditions are partly cloudy skies. The temperature is 28 degrees Celsius or 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are a fresh breeze of 18 miles per hour from the northeast. Seas are moderate to rough with waves of 5 to 10 feet and a high surf advisory is in effect. A high surf advisory means that dangerous surf of, surfs of 6 to 10 feet will affect some coastlines in the advisory area, producing hazardous conditions. Moderate long period swells are reaching the area and are affecting eastern 
eastern coastlines and the threat level to the life, livelihood, property, and infrastructure of those using the affected coastlines is moderate with the potential for significant impacts. These swells are expected to cause life-threatening surfs and rip currents for affected coastlines. The weather forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis for today will be partly cloudy with a 40% or moderate chance of showers. Tonight will be partly cloudy with a 20% or slight chance of showers. Sunset today will be at 6.21 p.m. Sunrise tomorrow at 6.19 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for these stories and more in detail. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jason Davis.